Hi, I'm Pat. Welcome back to the channel. Please subscribe if you haven't already. On today's episode, I'm going to be piecing a new quilt top. This is going to be an improv style crazy quilt with no pattern, no plan, and I'm going to use only scraps from my own stash. This quilt design is inspired by a New Mexico sunset. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Thanks for joining me. I like to do all of my piecing with a Singer Featherweight. I just think it's a great sewing machine and I really enjoy using it. It's a 1941 model. Um, I actually have more than one, but this one in particular just runs great. There are a number of spots that need a drop of machine oil before we can get started. And I don't mind doing this. I think it's kind of fun to do the maintenance as well as the sewing. My other featherweight is one from the 60s. It's a white one. It has a different kind of drive belt and surprisingly it actually feels a little different to sew on. Um, they're both great, but this one just somehow feels really special. There are also a few locations underneath that also need oil, but not as often. If you look closely, you can see the gears in here, and those gears need a different kind of grease once in a while, but that's just about once or twice a year. One thing that's really great about featherweights is how portable they are. Anytime I go to a class or to some other kind of event where I need to bring a sewing machine, it's just really easy to bring this along, and then I get to sew on my favorite machine no matter where I am. This video is going to be shown in two parts. So in part one today, I'm going to show how the top half of the quilt top was pieced. And then in part two, I'll show the bottom half and then putting everything together. So I got the stash out and started sorting some fabrics. I've picked out um, some bright, warm colors. I'm going to use these to create the sunshine effect. So this will be in the upper left corner of the quilt. And I'm going to make some strips that kind of represent sun rays. And they're going to come from the corner. I'll have a circle that kind of represents the sun itself. That'll give us a sun and sunshine effect. Some of these rays are going to be uh, pieced with multiple fabrics, like the one I'm sewing right now, and some of them will be strips of just an individual fabric. As the sun rays start to come together, you can see I'm trying to make them thinner at one end and wider at the other end so that it creates a, a circle rather than just a, a set of stripes. I'm not worried about the length of these strips at all because I'm going to trim them to be the same length once I'm done. I've tried to include some really loud prints in here and I've tried to include some things that are pieced at funny angles just to get a lot of motion. You'll also notice at one end I've got a light orange color. I'm going to put the same color at the other end at about 90 degrees and that's going to bracket these other prints. Okay, now with the strips done, I'm gonna trim both ends of this. 
I'm using a plate to trace a circle because I didn't have a round ruler big enough, but the plate worked just fine. And then I'm cutting another piece to go inside that circle out of this fabric with the lotus flowers on it. I'm going to use a lot of pins for sewing this curve because you really can't have too many pins when it comes to sewing a curve like this. After trimming the edges to make the corner of the quilt, it became clear I need to have another piece to actually fit in the corner because the circle wasn't large enough to go all the way to the corner. So I used some more of that light orange that I have going down the sides. Next I'm making the blue sky background and I made a mistake here. I traced the outside of the sun rays and then I cut on the wrong side of the line. So you can see here I'm on the outside and I should be on the inside of that line. So. All I did was just retrace it and then make another cut on the correct side of the line and then that will work just fine. You'll probably notice I'm not using a ruler to measure the seam allowance when I make that cut. I'm just eyeballing it and with enough experience it comes out close enough. The New Mexico state flag has a modern interpretation of an ancient sun symbol called a Zia. This is shown in the lower left corner here with a red circle and then four radiating red lines in all four directions. I'm going to incorporate a version of this in the right side of this part of the quilt. The current flag of New Mexico was adopted in 1925. If you want to learn more about that, check out the link below to the New Mexico State Government website. This is one of the few parts of this quilt design where I'm actually measuring ahead of time because I do want to make sure that these red stripes are all consistent size.
I haven't yet attached the four outer portions of this symbol to the center circle, and the reason is because I'm going to integrate this into the sky, and by keeping it separate for now, it will be a lot easier to assemble. So now I'm getting back to the less planned version of building out this quilt where I'm taking a look at the scraps, looking at the blue uh, prints that I have and trying to decide how I want to build out the sky around this symbol. I'm cutting these at an angle just to create a little more feeling of motion when the pieces are assembled together. Throughout this whole quilt up I'm using a lot of angles and I'm really trying to avoid just having a grid pattern of blocks. I want the whole thing to feel a little more freeform than that would allow. All right, that's it for part one. We've got the top half of this quilt top done now. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next time for part two.